Hey everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How are y'all doing today? You're probably wondering, where's the sofa? We just got it back. Now he's outside doing something weird. This is my tent that Matt put together for me to sit outside at the picnic table here and be able to talk on here, do videos, do live chats. Yes, we can also eat out here. We did last night. It was very, very relaxing. Uh, you probably saw on my other platforms where I did some videos of the campfire and all that stuff. So do not fear. The sofa is right back there. I've been on it all morning watching, as you can see from the title of this. Uh, we're still on Tim Jones Jr. trial. And I just watched the, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, the deputy or lieutenant, <clears throat> the prison guards, uh, testimony. And I got sucked into it and I was like, I have to make a video plain and simple. So here we are. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, if you haven't seen this, there's two, I I'm going to call them officers because I know there was a Lieutenant Presley and I'm not sure if Boyd was a Lieutenant or what his status is. Um, so I'm going to call them officers, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, just for, you know, keeping it easy so uh officer presley went first and let me just say that this guy is like super likable i mean when he was up there i just felt like you know i was like this seems like somebody that you know just just like a hard working goes home to the family probably you know having to take time out from that come here testify that type thing he was just a very likable guy and so was the other guy but i'm speaking about presley first uh so now presley is a deputy in the msu section which is like the max security unit <clears throat> which houses basically cases like this i mean this is like a high profile case so of course they're kind of you know they have to keep him safe and whatnot and other people safe in the whole nine yards so essentially what the testimony is about from both these guys is when he was being checked into their facility uh, for safekeeping, if you will, he essentially kind of broke down and just not spilled his guts, but he had an emotional moment and, and came forth with some things. And so these guys had to write a report on it. They put it in, and this was years ago. Um, I don't have the exact date here. I should have done that, but I don't. So, but it was several years ago. And, um, and so they wrote this report, and it's not a good report for him at all. It's very damning. And uh, so let's just get into it here. So, you know, first of all, the prosecutor's talking to Presley, and you know, he's, you know, questioning him how this went down, yada, yada. And essentially, Presley is saying that he was on, I think the team is a CIT unit, which they're kind of trained to, like, de-escalate situations. And so he said, basically, once the uh, Jones got in, the doors were shut, oh my gosh, I'm in prison, whatever. He kind of freaked out and had an emotional moment. He's crying. And essentially, he's just like, you know, apologizing for what he did. And uh, um, kind of goes into a little bit of detail about what he did. And so I'm just going to make little notes here. I'm going to read out the notes that I did reading it. Uh, I just kind of made bullet points. So we're just going to walk through those real quick. Um, he said he was wrong for what he did. He said that he felt sorry. Um... The story that he related to this officer is uh, his son had messed up something with a socket, and this set Tim off. Tim, you know, basically Tim was like, you know, you could have killed yourself. So the answer to that was to then kill the child. Um, I mean, perfect sense, right? But it, Tim essentially grabbed him and strangled him. And it's something about his hand. He said that his hands were too big to fit around his neck. So he grabbed a belt to strangle him. During this interaction, the daughter walked in and Tim basically began strangling her too. Um, now, the officer did say it really bothered him when there was something, I guess he said something to the effect of she turned purple, he strangled her so hard. Um, so that was essentially what this report said. So now I'm going to go ahead and say this because when the defense gets up there and starts trying to tear the story apart, this is the bone that they pick, which is there's nothing on this report about the daughter and we'll get to that in a second so there's nothing on this little report and essentially what travis or i'm sorry what uh, officer presley is saying is that look you know this is a 48 unit matt like there's 48 people in this unit these are you know high profile high risk death row all sorts of like you know this is a max security area and so they were understaffed and it almost sounded like they were in the middle of doing lunches or something and then this happened so essentially because of the way this goes down like all the people around like the medical and all that stuff they all have to kind of come to him because he can't just be 
you know, out and about in this you know, prison or jail, whatever it is, like a normal inmate. Um, so they all have to come to him. So basically, they're all in this area. It's very busy. It's very chaotic with all this going on. And so he had to write a report on what he heard. And so essentially, he writes this report. And he doesn't really mention the daughter part, but he mentions this other stuff about, you know, the, the strangling. And, and he said that he could, in his testimony, he was like, I don't remember if it was the oldest kid or the youngest kid that did this knocking and got strangled at first. But that's what went down and so there's that now the defense gets up after all that and they start trying to essentially tear his testimony apart and let me just go through my notes because this is something that he used continually and it just turned my stomach i'm not gonna lie uh please hold please continue to hold okay he was like you know isn't it part of your job duty to write a truthful accurate and reliable report and they kept saying that over and over and you know they're working you up to try to be like, and it's not truthful and accurate. And so uh, essentially what goes on is he's like kind of questioning, well, why isn't anything about the daughter on here? And why didn't you write a follow-up report when you weren't busy? And how come only after several years that you met with this prosecution team did you say, oh, I remember the daughter stuff? And with this guy, this guy is so calm and collected. And any words that the defense is trying to put in his mouth, he's like, no, that's not how that goes. And he's like, well, no, it, it doesn't work that way. He's so realistic and normal. And I just love that about his his character and his testimony um so you know he's trying to like dissect this and go through it and yada yada and i mean essentially he's just like well i couldn't write it down because we were in the middle of doing all this and i it sounded to me and i don't know 100 percent sure what he said i can't remember at this point i didn't make a note of it but it sounded to me like they had to have some kind of like time frame to write a report almost like within an hour or something and so he, it was basically like look i was in the middle of doing this i wrote down this part right here I didn't write that daughter stuff down, but for God's sakes, I remember it, you know, type situation. And I mean, what he was saying, I mean, you didn't have any reason to not believe this guy. Um, and so that aspect, I was just like, okay, I got it. But again, you know, with the defense, you know, the defense's job is to try and dismantle all of this testimony. And you know that's just what they do so of course they're going to get up there and oh well this doesn't make sense and why'd you do this and they just end up looking stupid and to be quite honest you know there's one part where he's talking about how when he came into the thing uh, into the sally port to his unit you know they were shackled and all this stuff and he was like and you put a dog a dog leash on him and he's like a lead and he's like but it looks like a dog leash and i'm like what is i mean what is the point you know what I mean? Like, I mean, is this, you know, what are, what are you doing? It's almost like pick your battles. And again, I, I'm all about fair trials. I'm all about things going by the book, no matter what. But in situations like this, it's just like, do pick your battles. You know, I get that you're trying to establish, well, why was this left off? Um, I understand that, but he's giving a very reasonable explanation. And so then we move on to his coworker. Uh, his name, last name is Boyd, I believe. And uh, let me get to his stuff right here. So, do, 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 do. I didn't write too many notes in my home because it basically was the same thing. So, Boyd is the one that essentially, hmm, pardon me, Boyd's the one that, he's the one who escorted him off of the the van or whatever, and he walked with him. And again, they're trying to, I wish they had a diagram because the defense was trying to get so nitpicky about well, why did medical writer report it this time and you wrote it this time? And, da, 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 da. and essentially they're trying to say we were all in this room together, you know. And I, I can, in my mind, completely see the logical way that it went down. And I'm just like, well, yeah, just like his testimony says, you know, this is a really high-risk inmate. So we can't just have him transported to medical. We had medical come to him. So they're all essentially in there. And he finally breaks it down, Boyd on the stand, and says, look, you know, where you're standing is where, you know, I'm making this part up, the psychiatrist would be. And behind the judge is where medical was. So it's almost like everyone was in there, and they are probably dotting their I's and crossing their T's. You know, all these people have to go through this battery of question and answers, you know, type situation bringing someone in. So he's witness to this stuff, too. And he said the same type thing, where he's like, you know, we were busy. You know, we were short-staffed that day. All this stuff was going on. And he's like, and he talked about the, you know, he got emotional, and he talked about strangling his son, you know, and so on and so forth. So, you know, some key points I want to go over here before I end the video is, you know, the defense is grabbing at straws. 
I, again, I, I understand they have to represent their client to the best of their ability. I can appreciate that. Uh, they need to pick their battles, though, and realize, look, that you're, you know, it, it just doesn't look good. You know, because especially the fact that he's, I'm sorry, and all this, you know, because things change. And I say this about different cases and stuff. You know, I feel like once they get to jail and all this is done and the things are clanking and all this type of stuff, reality sets in. There's no reporters around. There's no attention. You're in prison. You know, and I'm sure it's a rude awakening at that point, especially when it's a major high-profile crime that does not look well to other inmates and guards and anybody for that matter. Um, so that part, you know, it, it just it, it, it interests me that aspect with the the people, the alleged, you know, um, uh, perpetrators of these crimes. You know, what happens when they get there. Um, but I just felt like these were two totally reliable guards. I, I didn't have a reason to disbelieve them. I thought their story was logical. And I think that what happens is when the defense gets up there and starts trying to pick things apart, you know, it's almost like go with a different angle. But this whole aspect of we're going to try and make it look like you didn't do your job and you all conspired against him to lie about this. I mean, why? You know what I mean? Why? I mean, why would they? You know, give me a motive to that and then maybe, but I mean, why? You know, just don't, you're already, you already are have an uphill battle with this client. Don't make yourself look even worse. So, um, and then let's get into the testimony. And again, it's not, you know, again, it's their testimony. So it's not like, up oh, done, you know, case solved, but very interesting. And again, we don't know what to believe coming out of this man's mouth, but to me, it does sound like, you know, with his confession and then this, there's that mixture of, okay, so we can definitely probably trust that something went down with this socket. You know, something happened with that. He got him upset at the sun, and I mean, it sounds to me like he just killed him. Do I believe that the daughter walked in on it then? Probably so. Uh, because isn't that, doesn't this sound very familiar to another very popular case? You know, I think that these people snap in a way that most people don't snap. And then, of course, you have five kids in the house, and one of them's going to wake up and hear this going on. You know, and it just snowballs from there. You know, because again, you know, one kid, you know, you can't explain that away. But, you know, then you kill another one, and then, well, what's five at that point, I guess, is his thinking. So, but, you know, it reminds me of the scenarios, like, okay, we're, I can remember being a little kid, and, like, this comes to mind. Uh, this is just one example, but I, I think a lot of people experience this. Of, I went across the street, and this was not a busy street, but nonetheless, I should not have been doing this. Um, I crossed the street without asking my parents to go to a neighbor's house. And, I mean, ooh, they got angry, but it was one of those things of, like, you know, like when you get really scared, and you're like, oh, my God, come here, let me hug you, you scared me, and then you get really upset. I don't know if there's any love for this situation because of the way this man's described as being so angry all the time, but it, it, the whole way it went down reminds me of that, except times a thousand, because his, you know, almost like this, what are you doing, you could have killed yourself, and then he goes and strangles the kid, you know what I mean, so it's almost like this extremely exaggerated version of that that ended in five deaths, so... Um, I'm not trying to sit here and say that that excuses it or, oh, well, okay, I, you know, I, I can relate here. Uh, but it just reminds me of that right there where I'm like, okay, so the normal person, their heart might sink for a second and then it's, you know, don't do that. They don't, you know, strangle him. And if, the, if this part's true and I'll end here because I could keep going on and on about this. I know that I don't want to waste y'all's time. Um, when he was saying, when uh, Officer Presley was saying that, uh, what's his name, Jones, was basically like, I started to strangle him and my hands couldn't fit around his neck, so I went and got the belt. And I was a little confused on that part um, because I thought that, and I, my timeline could be wrong here, but I, I thought that the, I thought it was the older boy that did the socket thing, but the younger kids that he strangled with the belt because of that. So I was a little confused on that, but there could be, it sounds to me like he was probably blubbering, and there was a lot of, like, mixed up stuff going on there, so I'm not trying to say the officer's making that up or whatever, but it just confused me a little bit. But nonetheless, to make that active decision, to say, I'm strangling my kid, already we're in a, a bad zone here, obviously, but it's not working, so let me go get a belt. And to take them time to go get a belt. I don't know if he was wearing one or not. I don't Y'all let me know. Um, to take the time to go get the belt and come back and be like, well, now I can do it. Um, it's just horrible. It's just horrible. So, anyways, I'm going to end there. Um, I hope y'all are doing well. I'm loving the comment section going on here, y'all. I'm reading them. Um, the move is going well. I'm gonna, it's completely settled. We basically are. But we're getting into our routine here. 
so I appreciate all the well wishes. I appreciate the awesome commentary going down below and in our Discord channel. Be sure to check that out. There's going to be uh, links to all our social media in the uh, description. So I appreciate it, guys. I love y'all, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.